Hey guys, it's Michael here, and um, uh, with another ins installment of the uh, uh, endless, <laughs> it's starting to seem endless, <laughs> saga of uh, David Greenberger. Um, and finally, I have arrived to his band, Men and Volts. And um, uh, what, what, well, let's see, what shall I tell you about them? First of all, um, it, they they were it, they were active as a band from 1979 until about somewhere around 1990, um, and they put out a total of I believe five albums and a couple of singles. I don't have the singles yet. I see them periodically, uh, usually in Europe, and uh, I don't order things from Europe as a rule because the shipping is so exorbitant. I have a, a little record that I bought. And one of these days I had to do a thing, just a needle drop and uh, and uh, show you that uh, from uh, Norway that cost me um, the the album, or well, mini album, I think they called it, was, well, anyway, um, it's expensive to ship things from, from uh, Europe. It can cost you more than the record uh and uh so i'm very reluctant to do that um <clears throat> at any rate uh, the, the band began in 1979 david had been living in atlanta for a while and um moved back uh to boston um after he had gone to a show and had seen a band called uh, the swimming pool cues um and uh he hadn't been playing in any any bands down there, um, but he told me that watching them really sparked that fire and desire to uh, get back into playing music. <laughs> when he got <clears throat> up to Boston, he found a um, uh, uh, an ad. He ran across his ad in a local. Uh, independent music rag fanzine type thing uh looking for a bass player to um uh, f to play with a band that was being formed to do a one-time show um as a tribute band um to captain beefheart and that ad was um was placed by phil kaplan i believe um and uh, he went and uh, met the guys and um, joined the band, joined up with them. And they did do their show, their uh, Captain Beefheart show. As I recall, the first um, time they were going to do it, something happened. So they ended up doing two shows, two Beefheart uh, tribute shows. Um, but they found that they really liked working together as a band. And... Um, uh, decided that they were going to keep on playing, but doing original material. Um, in 1983, they put out their first record, which is a, an EP. It's called Rhythms and Blues. And the lineup at this point is Phil Kaplan on guitar and vocals, David Greenberger playing bass and organ, Roger V. Stevenson playing organ, uh, guitar, fretless bass and vocals, and John Proudman on drums and tabla with um, Keith Spring playing tenor saxophone, uh, Danny Bitker playing baritone sax and bass clarinet, uh, Chuck Bell uh, playing fiddle, and Lila Salins doing vocals um, in the back as background vocals. Um, the artwork on this is um, the record design is by David Greenberger. But it's based on artwork by Jad Fair. Um, there, and the lyrics. It's a four song EP. Um, I wish I had saved the, um, the uh, uh, sticker that was on the, on the uh, shrink when I got this. Um, because it, 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 the, it, it, the joke is, um, sides one and two are identical. And they, uh, 
the 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 sticker said comes with a free EP, <laughs> and I, I've uh, I I I cracked a joke with David uh, a couple of times that I thought I liked side two better than side one. Um, it is on Eat Records. I'm going to show you this label. Uh, it's kind of an interesting label. Uh, I like the artwork on it quite a bit. Um, somewhere I have, and I cannot find them since I moved, and I just pray that I did not toss them out. I have maybe four um, catalogs from Eat Records, and they were always done like diner menus. Um, David worked for that label. Um, he was the only employee uh, in the label, actually. Um, and, and he did the, the design store. So one of them even has a note from the founder on it because it was kind of a proof or something. But David just sent them to me one day and I, I just got done looking for them again. I can't find them. I don't know where they are. I'm kind of freaked out because when I moved last October, um, uh, a lot of things disappeared, um, and I, I fear that maybe in the frenzy of things that those may have uh, ended up getting lost. The founder of this label, by the way, um, then went on to um, uh, co-found with some other people uh, the uh, Ryko Disc label, which is kind of an interesting thing. Side note, the same year, in 1983, they went up to Maine to, um, where is the town? Um, uh, oh, golly, golly. Uh, uh, Bethel, Maine, um, to the Outlook studio, um, which is a very well-known studio, and, and um, oh boy, I've, I've seen some photographs of all of the stuff that had been recorded at Outlook, and this picture, uh, this was included. In this is their second album, and this is a full-length album. It came out later the same year, um, and has the same lineup. Phil Kaplan, Roger Stevenson, John Proudman, and David Greenberger. Um uh, and already, um, by this time, the first album, almost you can compare it in some ways to the Ruttles, um, who, um, so closely parodied the, um, uh, Beatles music style. It's just brilliant that, you know, they say it sounds so much like Beatles songs. And yet, of course, um, none of them are actual imitations of uh, there's nothing taken from the Beatles. It's just all in that so well adapted to that style. And the first album really does have a very strong Beef Hardian um, feeling to it. This album is beginning to change. Um, they're beginning to find their voice. And David has talked with me about that a bit and, and how, um, you know, the... Uh, that, and that, that was an important thing to them, that they didn't want to just be some band that, um, that everybody would just say, oh, they're, you know, um, they're, uh, you know, just beat, beef heart wannabes or something. Um, uh, and, and they're not. They're, they're not. And, and, and their, their first album is, is very good. Um, in this album, David begins to contribute to the writing. The first album is all Phil Kaplan, and I, I think maybe Roger is involved in some of it too. Um, uh, and uh, uh, for example, the song "No Shower, No Shave" is based on quotes from Herbie Caldwell in the du Duplex Planet Monthly. Um, uh, you know. Um, uh, and and then there's an like the instrumental big ball of string which was written by um, uh, Phil Kaplan and and uh, has you know um, it, it, there are things also incidentally the lyrics of Cafe Society the first song are based on inspired by or written by actually kind of um, but edited uh, a poem by E. e. Cummings. Um, the liner notes on this are written by Ken Eglin, and Ken Eglin was a resident at the Duplex Planet, where David was working. I'm not sure if he was still working there in '83. 
Uh, Ken Eglin, though, he this is the kind of guy David is, though. Um, after he quit working at the duplex nursing home, he remained in touch with the people that he had met there and uh, cared about them. Um, one one fellow passed away and with and had no family. And when he passed away, the nursing home was throwing out all of his stuff. And David went and saved his scrapbooks, um, which otherwise would have just, you know, and, 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 and then, so one of the things that David does uh, with his artwork and his writing and everything is, is he sort of, um, I hate to say memorializes, but he um, uh, kind of keeps, uh, you know, these people in, 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 in a sort of, a, yeah, I guess memorialized. Ken Eglin wrote um, a thing called Ken's Corner. Well, he didn't write it exactly. He dictated it more or less. Where David would play records for Ken, who was uh, had been a musician, I believe, if I remember right, and and was very into music. And he would play records for Ken, and Ken would uh, respond to them. Uh, sometimes very pointedly, other times in really odd tangents, um, and uh, eventually that. Ken's Corner appeared pretty regularly in the Duplex Planet up until his death in 1984, and um, and then um, eventually, uh, and, and was also published in, I believe it was Trouser Press, and some other magazines and things around. Uh, but that is a great album, by the way. It has some really good songs on it. And I, I, I guess I should mention, because it, it, it doesn't really... It's not that obvious looking at it, but the name of this album is Hootersville, and um, right here, there's the there's the title, and um, you know it, it's just a it's just a really good album. It's one of my favorites by them. If I have a favorite, I love them all. I'm not playing any music. You'll notice I'm 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 trying to decide what I'm going to play because when I'm done talking, I think I'm going to um, drop drop a needle and play one song by the band for you. Oops, wrong. The next album um, is uh, Tramps in Bloom. Um, and by this point, David is writing a lot of the lyrics. Um, he, he is a fine lyricist, and uh, I, I, I would like to do a whole thing just on his lyrics. One of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard is a song called January that he co-wrote with Travis Chandler, or Chandler Travis, excuse me. Um, uh, the lineup changes a little bit here. Um, you have Phil Kaplan on guitar and Jeff Cronenberg playing guitar and John Proudman on drums and also... Um, doing vocals along with Phil and David Greenberger. Roger Stevenson didn't really want to perform anymore, and he moved it over into production. Um, the, interestingly enough, though, the uh, Roger's still in the band photo. Um, and uh, I, I've seen another, a couple of other photos uh, that are... Uh, um, included in this. Um, I don't see, yeah, lyrics and, and music. Um, and I think, I think, um, uh, oh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, 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 at this point, um, David contributes to the lyrics on five of the songs on the album, and there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 12 songs on here. Um, it, it's a great album, and um, I, I recommend it a, a lot. It, it came out on two labels. Um, this was issued on Iridescence in the U.S. Um, here, here we go. Let's give you a view of the uh, label. Um, it was also is issued on uh, Rose, New Rose Records in Europe. And uh, I do not have a copy of it on New Rose. I do have two copies of it on Iridescence. This one and another one that is not in very good shape. 
Um, and uh, I'm having a hard time getting this back down into the sleeve for some reason. Uh, I really need to get, and, and one of these days I will invest in um, inner sleeves, as well as I, I also need to buy some more um, outer bags. And I like these kind of bags. I, I'm not real fond of, of the... Uh, um, whatever you guys call them, Blake, Blake's, um, sleeves. I, I, I understand why people like them. And, and, um, I think, uh, they, they make a lot of sense, but for some reason, I just don't like them. I like the bags kind of loose too. Um, uh, and there's my second copy of it. It's not in as good a shape. Um, although I paid, I think eight or 12, $10, maybe $12 even, uh, for it, and when I got it, I was very disappointed. This is the only disappointment I've ever had buying a record online. Uh, not that I've bought a huge number. Then they moved over to Shimmy Disc, and um, uh, this is the album uh, The Mule, which was their uh, first album on Shimmy Disc. Um, there's the label. I Shimmy Disc is a very interesting label. Um, there's a lot of bitterness and, and recrimination and uh, accusations and just all kinds of things about this label. Um, uh, apparently, I'm not sure exactly what, but there was some shady stuff. Of course, the, the label owner and founder, uh, along with Ed Magnuson, was the band... Bongwater, who I love, and I, I can't, I've got all their stuff digitally. Um, used to have uh, most of it on on vinyl, and uh, I don't anymore, and kind of kick myself for that. Um, and when when Ann Magn Magnuson accused him of ripping her off and all kinds of things, and I've heard some conversations, um, you know, from with these guys too about it, and kind of generally, uh, you know. The thing is, well, okay, and the lineup again has changed. We have Phil Kaplan and jo on guitar and vocals, John Proudman on drums, Sean Slade on guitar and vocals, and David Greenberger on keyboards. Uh, David, by this time, had moved um, to upstate New York um, and uh, has, uh, uh, since then, uh, has lived in upstate New York. Sean Slade may be a familiar name to you. Um, he was in a band in Boston called the Sex Execs. Um, and with the members of that band, um, and uh, I think one other person, uh, is a co-founder of the Fort Apache studio. Uh, Sean is co-producer of the album Live Through This by Hole. Uh, and co-produced or is engineer on albums by Pixies, by, I had, I had a long list of it at one time. Um, uh, gosh, and I'm just kind of, oh, Sebado and quite a few other, other things. He, he, he's very well known, probably better known for that. He also, um, has put out, uh, albums under his name. Uh, I don't have a one. I do have a CD, which I don't think I have sitting here, um, of uh, songs. There are 14 songs by, it's called 14 Songs by Mr. Slade and Mr. Greenberger um, that they co-wrote. Um, some of them appear on this album, on The Mule, and others um, are on uh, albums uh, recorded by Sean. Um, uh, anyway, uh, they, they put out a fifth album. It is called Cheer Up. Um, and uh, critics slagged that album. Uh, one of their biggest criticisms being that they thought the band looked like um, a, a convention of dentists or something like that. I'm like, well, fuck you, you know. Um, but, you know, I've, I've run into that before where critics seem to, you know, I, you know what? Dressing freaky doesn't make you a good musician. 
and and uh, there are times that I don't like to go to shows because having a great light show or, or a great stage show does not make you a fucking good musician. Um, if you're a good musician too, that's great, but um, you know your costume. The costume does not make the band. Uh, the clothes may make the man, but the costume don't make the band. And actually, clothes don't make the band. I do, however, have a whole bunch of other CDs. These are CDRs from David's Archives. If anybody is um, an archivist, <laughs> it is David Greenberger. Um, this first one is uh, a CD called Men and Volts Wearing Another Man's Hat. And um, it includes the song Miss Pearl by Jimmy Wages. Uh, Love is Bad for Business by Richard Thompson, Mr. Soul, I don't need to tell you, Dumb Dumb Boys, Iggy Pop's uh, song Rag Mama Rag by the band, Willie the Pimp, uh, Frank Zappa song Complicated Life um, from Muswell Hillbillies uh, album by the Kinks, um, uh, an album called Wild Wim a song called Wild Women that I can't identify, and he did not, oddly enough, identify uh, uh, who who did that? My, a lot of these are live, but not all of them. Um, and they range from 1981 to uh, 1985. Um, uh, the Cannon Song from Three Penny Opera, Lime in the Coconut by Harry Nelson, and Picnic Ape, which is a song that they recorded uh, in the studio on one of their records, uh, and is... Um, a song written by Travis Chandler Travis uh, of the Incredible Casuals, um, who and the Incredible Casuals uh, also then they covered Men and Volts uh, and recorded Men and Volts uh, song Records Go Round, um, which was written by David. Uh, and David and Chandler Travis have written a number of things, over forty songs together. Uh, they could you could easily put out a double album of uh, Greenberger Travis. Um, songs, and most of them are very, very good. The rest of this consists of, I have um, 14 um, studio sessions um, that cover uh, their rehearsals and, um, and what have you, uh, rehearsals, demos, and whatnot. Um, uh, outtakes, all kinds of things, and and cover all of their albums uh, from the first to uh, to the last. Um, there are, are quite a few from their time in um, in Maine while they were recording for Hootersville. Uh, I, there's like three parts to the road to Hootersville, um, and many of them are, you know. Uh, just simply, you know, very interesting stuff. I like it, and some of it I, I really enjoy listening to because you can hear, it's kind of like, um, you know, that Beatles box set that has all the different versions of, say, Penny Lane um, and, and whatnot, and, and you hear how a song grows once you hit the studio and start recording. The other 10 that I have here are live performances that began in 1981 and the last performance is in 1988, if I remember right. Um, I might, whoa, 1992. So there you go, Men and Volts were still active in 92, uh, but most of them are uh, from the, the early 80s and quite a few of them are from <clears throat> before um, they actually had put it out. This particular one, and I happen to have that, um, uh, you know, gig poster, um, too, uh, where they were opening for Swimming Pool Cues. And some of the songs already, Turkey Talk, Rotten Truth, um, you know, are already, uh, Red Haired Girl, uh, they're already, they've already got the songs, um, and, and they show up uh, on the first two records that they made. So that's what I've got. Um, most of these are live in bars, um, varying degree of um, uh, 
quality. Uh, uh, there's one that was um, re being recorded by a handheld recorder, um, and uh, uh, I think it was Chuck Bell was holding it, and, and at one point you can hear him having a little conversation. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning of track 16, the voices, it's on this one from Storyville in Boston um, in 1983. At the beginning of track 10, um, which is Mr. Soul, uh, the voices of Chuck Bell and Phil Milstein, Pat Lester, uh, can be heard as this was being recorded on the latter's handheld recording device. <laughs> you know, um, but... Um, this one is live to two track from Jimmy, WGBH in Boston. Uh, and there are two that are recorded live uh, at WGBH Studios. Um, and just various other, other places. I love having these. I think there may actually even be more of these. I, I do hope that at some time David uh, puts some more of this stuff out. Um, the other thing I want to say about... Uh, them while I'm getting ready to drop this is, although I haven't heard much about it, so I'm going to have to bug them and find out a little bit more, but Phil Kaplan and David Greenberger both told me that they were serious, that they weren't just joking, um, that um, they're planning on putting out a box set, which I think would be absolutely Excellent. I would be very, very happy if they did. And I'm going to play the song When You're Here, which is off of the Tramps in Bloom. Um, lyrics are by David Greenberger. The music is by Phil Kaplan. Uh, the lyrics read, when you're here, I'm a banker. When you're, when you're there, I'm a cop. When you're here, I'm hopping. When you're there, I drop. When you're here, I'm a ranger. When you're there, I'm a bus. When you're here, I'm a guitarist. When you're there, I bang drums. When you're here, I'm a clockmaker. When you're there, I start fires. When you're here, it's October. When you're there, I perspire. When you're here, I build bridges. When you're there, I dig holes. When you're here, I'm a millionaire. When you're there, I'm on the dole. When you're here, I'm the mayor of heaven. When you're there, I'm a spy. When you're here, my life's a poem. When you're there, it's a lie. When you're here, I get happy. When you're there, I get old. Say you'll stay for keeps. I'll give you all my love and gold. Um, really neat. Uh, neat song. I, I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to uh, leave. The painting that you see in the background was by a dear friend of mine who passed away about 12 years ago by the name of Jim Evans. And I'm going to go play with it while you listen.
also by Jim Evans. By Richard Gray, very dear friend as well. Oh, and that's where David Greenberger's painting normally hangs. Thanks for watching.